Right now, though, very pleased to have with us from American Majority Action. Uh, and she and her colleague, Celia Bigelow, will be with us in studio next hour. Uh, Aubrey Blankenship. Aubrey, how you doing? Hi, Ken. I'm great. How are you? I am good. Thank you so much for uh, uh, coming into the studio. And darn that D.C. traffic. You know, if we just maybe we should just ban cars. How about it? No kidding. Uh, now, you and your uh, colleague, as I mentioned, Celia, have written a piece, Why Young Women Want AR-15s. Absolutely. Okay. So, first question, Aubrey, why do young women want AR-15s? <laughs> oh, well, Celia and I got together and we decided that um, we'd tell the world um, why this is the best gun for um, self-defense. Um, we're young women and we... Um, you know, a young woman across the U.S. definitely fall victim to a lot of crimes, and um, we think it's important to talk about what kind of gun we should use to defend ourselves. So um, we're talking about the AR-15 and its accuracy, handling, and aesthetics. Um, we kind of put those three categories as the top reason for um, the reason why it's a gun we want. Okay, so uh, as you point out, you know, you say AR is the most popular rifle in the United States. More than 3 million mm -hmm. Americans uh, have one. Uh, and you say our goal when defending against a home invader is simple, uh, to hit where we aim. Now, uh, Aubrey, uh, uh, let me let me just I'm, I'm going to play devil's advocate here. I'm going to try to uh, Go I'll be like an American Piers Morgan. OK, <laughs> Aubrey, you live in a uh, urban area. You live in a big city. You don't live out in the boonies. Uh, why would you want a rifle for self-defense? Isn't that overkill? The fact that um I want any gun for self-defense, that same person would say it's an overkill. All right, so uh, you also point out, uh, you say this past week in Georgia, uh, an intruder entered the home of a mother and two children, uh, and you talk about this armed citizen story where the mom had a revolver mm -hmm. that she emptied into this guy who had chased her and her kids through the house. I mean, he had pursued them. This guy didn't yes. see the mom and kids run away and think to himself, all right, well, now I can get whatever I want without the... Uh, mm -hmm. People worrying about me. This guy went after mom and her two kids, and and he was able to crawl out after she uh, put five rounds in him. Um, but Aubrey, what what would have happened had this guy uh, had an accomplice? Exactly. We actually don't really even want to imagine what what could have happened. A number of things could have happened, but um, the point that she ran out of bullets um, is the scary fact. Well, it is. Now, you say um, you say we may not, and you direct this to Senators Feinstein uh, and uh, Governor Cuomo, uh, we may not need 10 bullets to kill a deer, but we sure need them in our own defense. And, you know, i got to say, Aubrey, I think that's a wonderful, wonderful point. When Governor Cuomo says, who needs 10 rounds to kill a deer? Uh, the, the, you know, that, that's not the question. The, the, the real question is, who are you to tell me how many rounds I need to defend myself and my Absolutely. family? Exactly. And so demonizing something that does give us that option um, you know, is basically taking away a right without any evidence to back it up. So, Aubrey, have you ever uh, gone out to the range? Have you actually you know, shot an AR? I have not shot the AR, but um, Celia has, and she is uh, just chomping at the bit to get me out there, um, which I hope to do soon. And um, But, yes, I have been to the range and, you know, shot some other guns and um, just the fact that, um, you know, I can shoot an AR-15 if I want to. That's, that's what's important to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious, what has been the reaction, particularly among uh, younger readers, uh, uh, to the piece that you and Celia wrote, uh, which, by the way, as you mentioned, uh, you can find it at National Review uh, online? Well, they are actually eating it up. I um, love the fact that this is um, something that young people are caring about, um, and it's not just, not just not just people who in their, in their family culture have grown up with guns, but other people who actually have never shot a gun are telling me, hey, this is exciting. Uh, that's good to hear. And, and so, you know, it's, it, I got to say, Aubrey, I, look, I'm sure that there are young women out there who uh, would read this piece, and Aubrey, you don't speak for me. Um, yeah. But I did see a study that was done by an anti-gun professor at American University recently indicating 60% of young Americans say that they either definitely plan on owning a firearm or they are considering uh, becoming a gun owner 
when they reach adulthood, when they are able to. So, mm -hmm. you know, and this anti-gun professor was horrified. She said, well, this is why we need to have this conversation, because clearly what we've been doing right now hasn't made a difference in changing the hearts and minds of these young Americans. Yes. You know, and never once, Aubrey, I don't think that that professor considered that maybe she's the one who's wrong. Maybe, maybe she's the one whose heart and mind needs to change. Yeah, and we have to realize that a lot of this conversation, um, especially on the left, is politically motivated. And so what Celia and I really wanted to do in writing this piece is just looking at the facts of this gun. You know, what is this gun and um, why should we be allowed to um, use it if we see it as the most effective means of defending ourselves? Well, listen, Aubrey, I'm looking forward to talking to you in studio uh, here next hour, and I really appreciate you coming on the show this afternoon, and uh, I guess I'll see you here soon. Thank you. Thanks for having me.